Okay, so just a quick update on the Mobile 6 2024 edition 04 build series. And uh, what I've just received, uh, actually received a week ago, is the Beta FPV Matrix 1S flight controller, which says that it supports 5 volts up to 3 amps. And that's useful for the uh, 04 Air unit because, as you saw in my previous video, it does brown out. Uh, it doesn't last very long, about 2 minutes flight time. And the 04 Air unit will then cut out, it will brown out and you don't get any signal back to the goggles. So inevitably you'll crash. And um, it did work, I mean it allowed me to fly around uh, using the 04 Air unit on the goggles too. But of course I wanted it to work all the time without cutting out and be able to get it down to uh, you know the reasonable 3.5 volts on the battery on a 1S and still be able to return back to where I'm you know where I'm flying from and uh, yeah get the proper flight without having it cut out anyhow so this is just an update to say that it does work I was able to get it installed I've got it in there as you can see and uh, I've been flying it around doing a few test videos uh, recording it and trying to debug a few things uh, about I guess recording the onboard video so I've got a few examples that I'll show some videos in a second but I just wanted to talk about now uh, the installation and I'll go through a build video after this in another video so I will actually post it up later so I just wanted to post this video just to give a bit of updates on what I've done here and uh, what worked so far all right so I think a few of you are interested in the weight of this so I'm just going to put it on the scale here and in the last build video of the, the one with the Super X flight controller that I've pulled out here uh, it came to about 23.83 dry this now comes to 23 23 flat so that's about a 0.83 gram weight savings after I've done all the mods with the battery that I weighed on last time which was the Dogcom one uh, it comes down to now 31.25 so I think that's pretty good given that there is an 04 air unit on board in terms of flight times, I've been using these Tattoo batteries. These are fresh ones, a 300 milliamp hour, high volt. And I've been getting about an average of three minutes and that's with aggressive, semi-aggressive freestyle flights. So if you took it easy and just cruised around, I'm guessing you'd probably get about three minutes and 20 seconds or so, but I can't help it but actually rip this thing around. I did try to fly around slowly in some of the test videos that you'll see later. Uh, but yeah, I do kind of push it and I get about three minutes, which is I think respectable for the uh, the weight that is put onto this thing. Um, and it flies quite well and is able to pull off some of the maneuvers that uh, I didn't think that I could do with this kind of weight. Now, one thing I th think that might be, uh, I'm not sure if it's a placebo thing or not, but this seems to fly a little bit more, I guess, um, lighter. It feels lighter, a lot lighter, even just given the one gram difference of weight to the Super X here that I had in the, the previous build beforehand. Uh, but it seems as though it has a lot more power than, the, than this Super X one. So I'm going to put that down to the flight controller with the ESCs and the FETs that might be a bit better on the actual um, Beta FPV matrix. Uh, I'm not sure if that's just me as a placebo, like I mentioned, but yeah, this uh, flies a whole lot better. It has much more punch. It feels a, a lot closer to something like an analog one, like this one, um, than it did when it had the Super X in. So let me know in the comments down below if you find that as well, or if you've, you know, I don't know if you've had any experience between the Super X and the Beta FPV Matrix, but I have now. Um, and the Matrix seems to perform a whole lot better than the Super X. In terms of recording, I was able to get 4K 60fps recordings uh, onto this on board and also obviously with the goggles. I am using the goggles too. Um, so there's no issues there. Um, there's a, the jitter issues that a few people have uh, mentioned online already. So I think it's Albert Kim and also Nick Burns has mentioned a few of those things. So I'll go through that in a second. I've been running this on 700 milliwatts without any issues, so the transmission power, and I've been able to get some decent range um, to fly, I guess, around my house and everything to the other side, through brick walls and everything, and be able to get some reception still of this little quad um, in HD. So it is still uh, quite good. I haven't tested it in terms of range and distance, but uh, for now, in terms of flying around the house, it does a great job. Alright, so onto the jitters and the jello that some people have been mentioning about having it on a 65mm whip or some of the other 
whoops, like a 75 millimeter um, Meteor as well, is that um, there have been some mention about keeping this a, a loose instead of kind of floating, instead of hard mounted to the uh, flight controller or the actual main board of the frame. So you can see here, I've already uh, done some of the modifications. I've stripped away, I've used the blade to cut away at the the arms of this mount here and also the front as well so I've taken that completely off and I've also left the uh, the cable here of the camera cable I've left it loose as well just like this floating and it seems to have cut out those jitters I've also done what uh, Nick Burns and Albert Kim has suggested is play around with the PWM frequency of the ESCs so I've reflashed this from the 96 kilohertz on the ESCs in Blue Jay down to 48 kilohertz um, just to test it out so the reason why this video is coming out later than I expected is because I've been going through many different test uh, configurations of being able to try to get rid of that jello I was really frustrated with the the jello that was coming out from the onboard recording as you'll see as an example um, I'm so I just wanted to be able to get that all sorted before posting it so that uh, yeah I'm not leading anyone astray all right so you can see the uh, comparison video here the top one is the goggles 2 DVR and then the bottom is the 4k onboard recording and you can see it's jumping around all over the place so it kind of jitters and the gyro inside the camera isn't coping well with the frequencies and it seems like yeah it just cannot handle that uh, if you look at the DVR on top it's fairly smooth I can I guess in my flight style there's a little bit of jitters but there are some points there where I'm just flying straight and flat and it does jitter if you look at the 4k one in fact it's just jittering all over the place throughout the whole video so that was really getting to me it was really bugging me but I was able to get sorted out um, playing around and also watching the videos online um, to be able to try and debug that uh, so hopefully this helps for you as well in terms of trimming away of the uh, the canopy that I 3D printed or if you had the same one or being able to work out another solution to make the camera float uh, more than it is rigid to the, the frame. So I hope it helps someone out there if they're able to do the same similar thing. I am in the middle of remixing one of these canopies to be able to make it look similar to what I've already got here so we don't have to cut away at it and make it look a little bit nicer. Uh, so I am remixing it and also being able to have this a bit longer, probably extended out four or five more holes out here so that we can get uh, more shallower uh, camera angles. Right now it's a bit a bit high, it's almost like 45, probably like 35 to 40 degrees, um, which forces you to fly a lot faster, which I don't mind actually, but um, just to fly around the house it's a bit hard. So I will be remixing it and I'll be posting it in the, the next video, the build video, so that You'll be able to see that as well. I haven't done it yet, but uh, yeah, I'll add it to that video. All right, so here is an example of the smooth flight that I was able to get uh, after playing around with it all. And you can see here, it is much better. This is obviously the DVR that came straight out of the onboard recording. Um, there is still prop wash that I've got there, as you might see as it flutters down, but it does get a much better, less jittery or at least none that I can really see. Um, you could probably pick out a couple of them in there uh, if you look very carefully or if you are keen eyed. Um, so yeah this does uh, work now and uh, I'm quite happy with the results here. Okay, so that's it for this video. Just a little bit of an update uh, to, to let you know what the outcome was. Uh, but stay tuned for the next video where I will be doing the upgrade, the mods where I'm taking out the Super X flight controller, dropping in the Matrix 3-in-1 uh, and uh, going through all the steps to be able to show you how that was done um, and get it working. All right, I hope you like that. Let me know down in the comments uh, anything of your thoughts. Uh, um, I, th I find this quite interesting and a lot of things that other people are doing uh, in the community is uh, quite innovating. So let me know and uh, yeah, happy HD flying. Cheers.